This is the year that Fink beats the stomach. <laughs> Welcome to Fink Pizza Stomach, our bi-weekly take on the world of competitive eating. I'm Michael Sullivan. And I'm James Splendori. Episode number 95. I was doing number bits again for a while, but I got nothing. By a while? I think it was like one episode. For those two, I feel, I feel like we had two. Um, but uh, 95, feeling great. It's just good to be back. No, We're getting no very close necessary. to 100. Like yeah. This is the first time I feel that. Yeah. I, even though I probably said it the past three episodes. Every time. I feel like I, but, since we hit like 80, we've been saying that. Um, but what I can say is episode 95 is sure to be a banger, a, a greatest hits, I'm sure. Damn, I literally thought center button. I literally thought about it, too. I don't think just, it was a center button. You yeah, just got to like not play around. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, Set the I, timer, everybody. It's not going to be a long one. But um, very excited about episode number 95. Oh, yeah. Because we have a special guest. We've had a slew of special guests on yeah, Fit Pizza Stomach recently. Well. We've been very, very lucky. Um, and this week is no different. Yep. He is uh, on record with us as being one of the favorite guests we've ever had on the show. Um, yeah. Honestly, when people ask me about um, what episodes of Fit Pizza Stomach to listen to, I point them in the direction of a 2018 spotlight that we did with this man. And the reason for that is not only because he's the 18th ranked competitive eater in the world. According to Major League Eating. It's not because he's also a professional wrestler. Megabyte Ronnie. It's just because he's just an all-around great dude. So we are so excited to welcome back to Fink Pizza Stomach the great Ronnie Megabyte Hartman. Ronnie, welcome back. What's going on, man? Hey, man. Hey, not a lot, guys. I just uh, got home for college, so I appreciate you having me on here. Absolutely, but how is school going, by the way? Because I feel like last time we talked to you, you had just moved up there, and mm -hmm. you were you had moved up there. I, I feel like originally to go to school. That was one of the reasons was going to you go to you you have Buffalo, right? I, I'm at Buffalo State. Buffalo so, State. Uh, when, originally, when I moved up here, I was going to school uh, full time, and with my GI Bill, because I was in the Army, they actually pay me like a decent amount to go to school, like monthly. Awesome. And. Uh, that was uh, kind of working out, but then I had to move out of my roommate's place and get my own place, and I had to get a real job, and then, like, school's kind of been on the back burner, yeah. but now it's back. Now it's back. Now I'm back in there. Amazing. And um, amazing for us, but potentially terrible for you that you're spending what little, like, free time you have talking with us. <laughs> um, but what's what's your major? What are you, what are you studying uh, at Buffalo State? So I'm actually a journalism major, so. Uh, whoa, whoa yeah. that's awesome. I thought you were yeah, doing the IT I thing. No, so, like, I've been doing IT since I was, like, 19 years old, and to be honest with you, I really don't have that much passion for it, yeah. so, like, I'm trying to get into something that uh, I have a little bit more passion for. Lord knows he's a storyteller. I mean, normally <laughs> normally we, we are sort of doing the, the fake journalism thing, but... Um, as, Very fake journalism. As, as, soon as, Ron, <laughs> as soon as Ronnie gets on anything, um, you know, you're always taking over the story and the storyline just because there's so much to talk about. Yeah, and if you, if you ever start like your own, uh, you know, news conglomerate, you can always hire us to do some like fake competitive eating news. So don't forget about us when you uh, take over the journalistic world. Definitely uh, won't. And uh, now I can add a little bit of uh, legitimacy, legitimacy to uh, think piece of stomach. We a need too much it. Of the, we sure sound bubbly it. already. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, you're. So you're. You mentioned off air. You're drinking champagne. Are you also? Is it a mimosa? Are you drinking champagne and orange juice? You mentioned you had the orange juice. So I, uh, golly, my fiance's a bartender, so she's going to hate me. Like, I don't even know what a mimosa <laughs> is. So, like, it's champagne like, and orange juice. Right you have all the ingredients. Yeah. yeah, she told me to just say yes. So I guess I'm <laughs> drinking a mimosa. I love Ashley so much. That's yeah. some, that's yeah. some of the best off mic content we've had in a long time. <laughs> Thank you, Ashley. <laughs> so really, I, I'm, I'm not fancy like that. Like, I don't drink champagne. Uh, this is probably, like, the second time in my life I've drank champagne. I just, like, I got home, and I was like, yo, babe, I'm going on Fink. Like, what do we have to drink? And she's like, uh, champagne. I'm like, let's do it. And uh, here we are. <laughs> well, well, cheers to you, Ronnie. Uh, yeah, cheers to that. No man. champagne on this side, but uh, very good to have you on, as always. So I, would, I, I don't know if I want to assume the reason you're drinking champagne is – all the success that you've had in the professional wrestling world, Ronnie, because, you know, I know that I, and I guess, let, let me start with this question first. When you moved up to Buffalo, was part of it 
I guess, like, did you know about the professional wrestling scene that was going on in Buffalo? Because, I mean, for those who, who don't know, let me take a step back for a second. Being a professional wrestler is something that's been, you know, a dream of yours for, for many, many years. I know you mm -hmm. sent it in tape for Tough Enough many, many years ago. Oh. And it's something that you've, you've always yeah. kicked around. But, you know, I know the, the group that you've gotten linked up in Buffalo. Was that something you discovered when you got there or was kind of part of the move, so to speak? Uh, so to run it back a little bit, like when I was getting out of the army, like in my head, like I'm getting out of the army to be a professional wrestler. Like I thought I was just going to get out of the army and just like jump straight in the WWE and everything was just going to take off for me. And then like, uh, I, I got out and I started training in North Carolina and the place I was training at, I didn't really, uh, enjoy the trainer. Mm. I kind of felt like it was a scam and I only trained there for about a month and a half and I felt a little bit defeated about it. And this was, I was probably about uh, 26 at the time so fast forward about three years later in north carolina i'm just kind of like man i'm not really uh uh doing a whole lot that i thought i'd be doing once i got out of the army and i right. needed like a jolt like a change in my life and it just so happened to be my best friend from the army uh we lived we were barracks mates when we lived in south korea he lived in buffalo and he's always like man you got to get up here you got to get up here you got to get up here uh, i came up here for wing fest i came up here for his wedding and i really liked the area and i looked and saw that they had a wrestling school but i never contacted the person i didn't like do a tour like i i had no clue what i was getting into except that they had a wrestling school uh grapplers anonymous and thank <laughs> god like yeah thank god grapplers anonymous is like the greatest place in the world like the greatest trainers the greatest guys to be around the buffalo uh area is great for wrestling so much talent coming out of here like i'm legitimately training with I think uh, three to four guys that are going to eventually be WWE stars. Like I, I think they have the potential to go that far. So like, I, I just got super lucky that everything just kind of worked out for me up here. And like what, uh, I guess, so just to kind of give for the, for any of the people, like obviously I'm a big wrestling fan, James and Kate downstairs puts up with me talking about professional wrestling, but people do, obviously when they think of wrestling, they think about the WWE, maybe WrestleMania, like the stars and lights and so on. What is it like kind of like being an independent wrestler in Buffalo? Like, what is it like being part of that scene? Is it something that you, you know, is it something you're showing up to like an hour a week as like a hobby or it seems to be a little bit more of like a lifestyle in a sense? Uh, so for a lot of the, the kids that are 20 years old, I think of it as more of a lifestyle because a lot of these kids are traveling around on, on weekdays or weekends and going places. Me, I got a full-time job, so it's kind of hard for me to do things like that. Um, and I would say, like, I'm wrestling in buildings that are in front of about 150 to about uh, 250 people. Um Unfortunately, I feel like things have kind of slowed down for me because, like, a lot of the places I'm wrestling, the promoters or the guy who runs the show, um, they're just looking for people who can sell tickets. And I don't really know people in Buffalo. Like, I moved up here with no family. Right. Uh, I mean, I got, you know, I got a few friends, but I can't compete with some 18-year-old who's selling tickets to his whole entire family. So, like, it's kind of like a, like a struggle. Like, think of it as trying to be a... Uh, an actor like if you're out there and you're acting and you're at some fair in iowa you could be the best damn actor out there but nobody's getting you know you're not getting enough eyes on you so it's right. just trying to trying to show up to every damn thing that i can and get as many eyes on me as i possibly can and just hoping that one day the right set of eyes are looking at me and, and so ronnie uh mike and i both listened to your um your interview on uh Marty Smith's show uh, on the uh, uh, on the podcast. I loved it, by the way. I was I was, yeah, was uh, I was like cackling a couple times uh, during during so the episode. I, I grew up a NASCAR fan because I'm a redneck from North Carolina. Like <laughs> Marty Smith was the guy in, in NASCAR. Like yeah. I, when you're watching a NASCAR show, man, like Marty Smith is the dude. So when they they reached out to me. I was like marking out in real life. I was like, "Holy cow, I get to talk to Marty Smith, you know?" <laughs> and, and so Mike sent me the thing, and I didn't really look at it. And I looked, and I was like, "Oh, I know Marty Smith." And somehow, I don't. I guess you watch enough ESPN, and all these guys sort of come across your radar. But um, you mentioned that, like, you know, the social media thing is is a huge part of that. Um, do you, like at what point do you like just say, you know what? That's not me. I'm not going to do it. I'm just going to try to keep wrestling and try to build it like sort of more organically or are you like 
I'm going to do whatever it takes and like I'm going to try to like do the stuff that maybe doesn't come as natural to you? Like where do you draw that line? That's what I want to do. Like honestly, I want to be like the hell with it, but I can't because it's such an important thing. And I, luckily for me, I have people like my fiance or uh, the people I wrestle with that are like uh, like Daniel Garcia, who's a local wrestler who's uh, going to be wrestling for Evolve, which is a very big company. Like Evolve is like your step right before WWE. He is super good at social media and anytime i link up with him he's like hey man why aren't you posting more like why aren't you putting more content out there why aren't you why aren't you doing this why aren't you doing that and like in my head like uh i'm a little bit mm, older than a lot of these guys i'm I'm 30 years old getting into this so i i want to be like the hell with this but i can't be so i i I try to be good at it but i'm not good at it but like i'm still trying you know so we've we've had a very similar conversation about like youtube videos for competitive eating as well Mm -hmm. so that's not the only thing that's similar to sort of competitive eating and wrestling. We've talked with obviously one more bite a thousand times. Mike will mention competitive eating more than a couple times. So I'm interested to hear from you because a lot of people ask Mike this question. What is the link between the two and why does there seem to be so much sort of carry over from one to the other in terms of like what you love about both or what people sort of say to you about both? About competitive eating and, 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 and wrestling. wrestling? Yeah. Oh man. So like, here's the deal. Like, (laughs) (laughs) like I, I always grew up like since I was four years old on the be Hulk Hogan, I had no clue like this competitive eating thing was going to be a thing like in my life at all. Right. So here I am in Afghanistan being convinced to go try out for Nathan's and I'm like, well, yeah, you know, whatever. And, and I I get there and I sign up and I'm, I'm at the contest and I'm backstage and I'm, I, I don't really, I don't know. I'm not really thinking too much about it, but the second that George Shea got on that microphone and I got my own entrance music and I got my own uh, entrance. I was hooked like that, yeah. man. I was hooked before I took my very first bite. It is so much uh, like wrestling that the, I say that the only thing that's different is that pro- professional competitive eating is real. Like I can control <laughs> the results of that. Like, you know, I, I, I think uh, people who like wrestling are, are competitive eating fans, and I feel like people who like competitive eating are wrestling fans. Like, it just kind of, I don't know, people who enjoy one kind of enjoy the other. Yeah, and I mean, proof proof positive. I, I, I think I, I really attribute to the fact that I'm uh, such a big competitive eating fan. Good job, kid. Especially in the beginning. Yeah, if anyone's watching on YouTube, you're seeing one megabyte Ronnie uh, do his thing on, on uh, in the ring here. Uh, being fantastic yeah, okay. about it yeah, as well. Being great. <laughs> yeah. Um, look at me give the kid the head. My head. All right, sorry. <laughs> uh, really putting yourself over here, Ronnie. That's, it. Um, oh, that's why we're here. That's why we're here. Um, but no, like I, I totally agree with that statement. I, I think there is a, there is a lot of crossover. Um, but the thing I'm curious to hear your perspective on Ronnie in terms of competitive eating and wrestling is, you know. Does, as the eater, because I, th- I think you guys as competitive eaters are almost independent wrestlers in your mm-hmm. own right in the sense of you're marketing yourself. It's not just how you compete at the table, but you're trying to make an impression. I, I in my opinion, you're trying to make an impression on the crowd. Because trying to make a name for myself. Trying to make a name for yourself. Uh, and, uh, yeah, like, yeah. I, obviously, you know, people know Joey and, and you know, people know Stoney and, you know, Esper starting to get cred. But outside of, you know, being the top person at all of these contests, there are some people like a Juan More Bite who I feel like take an approach of having a character. Like Juan is very famous in my mind on our show of saying something to the effect of, you know, there's Juan More Bite and there's Juan Rodriguez. Right. Do you feel a similar way in that as a competitive eater and especially as a wrestler, there's Ronnie Hartman and there's also Megabyte Ronnie or Dizzle Flex as you've been known as in the past. Yeah, or, where did you know, that name go? Dizzle, Dizzle, uh, Dizzle Flex was actually a thing that I've been doing since I was 16 years old. I don't, I don't know where that nickname went. <laughs> like it's just it's I just became Megabyte Ronnie. But to uh, answer your question, uh, so when I'm wrestling and I'm out there uh, in the middle of that ring, I feel like my job is to get everybody in that crowd invested in what I'm doing in that ring. And for you know, you you kind of have to make a connection with people so to tie that to eating when you go and watch an eating contest if this is your first time there and people just walk up on that stage and walk up to the table show no character show no personality you're you're over it before you even see them right eating like you 
you need to get those people invested. And I want to make sure that anybody who shows up for a competitive eating contest uh, enjoys themselves. And, and people do it better than me. Like Juan does it way better than me. Uh, there's, a, there's a lot of good people who have a lot of fascinating stories who make you interested in competitive eating before they take their first bite. And I think that's very important to our sport. Now, obviously, like you mentioned, you can control the, um, the results of an eating contest. Do you feel – this is maybe – too philosophical I'm but like, so excited. do you feel like megabyte well no we should definitely fix events there's no doubt about it but do you feel like megabyte ronnie is eating or are you like no like i can joke a little bit but like ronnie hartman is eating this thing and i'm gonna compete or like do you sort of get taken over by the show a little bit while you're eating as well i think there's a switch once we once george hits five four three two one i think Megabyte Ronnie goes away and Ronnie Hartman shows up and Ronnie Hartman is a very competitive person like you don't want to play basketball with me because I'm out there diving for balls like right. I will I will do anything to win like I'm, I'm horrible at flag football like I, I am just a super competitive person so like the very second it goes from showmanship to sport and competitive eating, I'm able to make that switch. And that's why I, I probably love it because I love both aspects. I love the showmanship and I love the sport aspect of it. And I feel like a lot of people who are in competitive eating uh, enjoy both aspects of that. Right. So he's going back to, to wrestling. Explain to us and to the listeners who Megabyte Ronnie is from a, a wrestling standpoint. Like, what is the character that you've you've kind of helped build that we're seeing kind of on this screen and so on? So, originally, what they wanted me to do, when I say what, like, bookers or people I wrestle with or trainers like that, they kind of wanted me to be a Rick Rude character. They kind of wanted me to be like, oh, look at me, I eat all this food and I have a nice physique and you people out there are fat and blah, blah, blah. Um, and I, I didn't really relate to that. So, like, that wasn't me. And I feel like the best wrestling personalities are your own personality – turned up to 120 percent so i feel like the character that i am out there um is a little bit bitter he's uh he's hit this point in his age or in his life where he's 30 years old and, and things really aren't going the way that he thought they were going and right. he sees he sees these kids these 20 year old kids out there that are that are taking his spot and in his head that should be his spot because he's the guy who's on ESPN. Like, what are these kids doing? They're living at, at home with their basement, and, and they're taking my spot. And I um, I certainly feel like that to an extent. I don't feel like that uh, the, the way my character shows. But I, I take that fuel that, uh you know, fire, it gets me fired up, and I, and I turn that notch up to 120%, maybe 130%. And that's who you see in the ring. A lot of times they want me to be a good guy out there, and I'm just not very good at being a good guy. I'm much, <laughs> I'm much better at getting people to boo me than I am to getting people to cheer me. That's for sure. Which is ironic because we feel the opposite about again the real Ronnie Hartman. Correct. Yeah. Um, I. No, you, it, keep going. It, it's it's funny, man, because I I feel like I'm a type of person that like I feel like I meet uh, friends. I'm able to relate to people. Like it's it's easy for me to get along with people, but. We'll, when I'm in that ring, man, like it's I I much prefer to be a heel or a bad guy. Like that is just who I naturally am as a wrestler. Ever since I was four years old and I envisioned myself in WWE, I've always envisioned myself as a bad guy. And it's just like it's so hard for me to be a good guy. Like I, I just I I, I I don't know, I just I need to be a heel. <laughs> And the thing that I have to ask you about, Ronnie, uh, from a wrestling standpoint is, correct me if I'm wrong, but I, I think from the, uh, some of the matches of yours that I've seen, you're billed from Coney Island. Is that correct? <laughs> yeah, because, man, when you go to a show from around here, everybody's billed from Buffalo. If they're not billed from <laughs> Buffalo, they're billed from a suburb out of Buffalo. And uh, originally I came out to uh, from Greensboro, North Carolina, but one of my refs, Right after my match, he said, "You know what would be cool?" And I was like, "What's that?" He's like, "You should be billed from Coney Island." I was yes. like, "Man, it's, you're yeah." I'm like, "You're a genius." You know? <laughs> I didn't I didn't come up with Mega by Ronnie. Like one of my sergeants came up with that. I didn't come up with Coney Island. A ref came up with that. But I, I feel like I'm pretty good at taking things and running with them. So if you give me something, I will run with it. You know. What about your finishing move? Because that is Coney Island related as well, right? Yeah, I call it the cyclone because of the roller coaster. There. <laughs> <laughs> Not a lot of people know that, so that's kind of like a did you know fact there. <laughs> have you been Which, on the cyclone? I have to ask you. 
No, I have not been on the Ooh, cycle. You gotta so, go. You gotta yeah. go. Well, not really the thing you want to do after, after eating yeah, like, 30 odds. You're not in the best position to go. Yeah, you know, unfortunately, I'm not one of those top eaters that get to go out to New York City for five days. I kind of show up <laughs> the day before and leave the day after. So maybe one day. <laughs> <laughs> well, Ronnie, it seems like I know we are, we, I think, talked to you, Fink talked to you like right when you were moving to Buffalo. Yep. And it really feels like I mean, we have an affinity for the, the town. Um, and it seems like that's, this has sort of been like a real launching pad for you. Um, which obviously this weekend we, or we just had past Labor Day weekend, the, um, the Buffalo extravaganza, there's yeah. sort of multiple, uh, contests going over two days. We'll get to both of them in a minute, but, um, we obviously love Buffalo. We, uh, we were there four years ago. Yeah, I was trying to think. I think it, I think it was for you because Kate and I went wow. two years ago, okay. which is actually the first time Ronnie that we ever met in person, which right. was so crazy because I, I feel like it was maybe two years prior that we had started talking to you on the show, and it was yeah. probably when we went to Wingfest too. So yeah, it probably was four years ago that so, we had gone. So yeah. it's been a while since I've been back, but um, you know, what are your thoughts on on the city, on your move there? Obviously, a lot sort of started and, and continued and grown since you're there. Um, what is Ronnie Hartman or Megabyte Ronnie now, like almost two years into into Buffalo? You know, it's funny because like when people ask me where I'm from now, I say Buffalo. Awesome. Like I, it's telling. yeah, I I absolutely love this city, and and the winters are long and the winters are harsh, but damn, are the summers great and the summers are amazing. And there's so much to do here. There's a festival, a concert, an outdoor event every weekend and i tell people that if you live in buffalo new york and you're sitting home bored on the weekend you have to try to actually be bored because yeah. there's something out there like you can find something to get into in this town uh the people are are nice uh to still a word from native buffalonians they're not too uh hoity toity here which i've never <laughs> yeah, yeah 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 so the people people here are all right man I, I i love this town and i never thought that i would be so happy uh, to live here, but I'm so glad that I, if my life took me here. Now, are you gonna are you gonna adopt the Bills? God no. <laughs> Man, I, <laughs> I mean, you can see, right? we can see on your your shirt. Yeah, so I work at New Era, which is kind of like uh, maybe even the biggest company to come out of Buffalo, which is the hat that like 75, 80 percent of people are wearing out there. Yeah. Uh, today was uh, wear your spirit gear, and everybody showed up in Bills gear, so I had to be, you know, hashtag Hill and represent the Cowboys. <laughs> Um, but yeah, no, like in terms of Buffalo, like I, I was so surprised at how much I really appreciated and, and formed a love for the city. And, and I, I don't know what it is, but Buffalonians are very, very proud of oh, the yeah. city of Buffalo. Oh yeah. Like, it, you know, I, I have a, a co an old coworker from my previous company who grew, you know, born and raised in Buffalo and then through the company, ha you know, hasn't lived there full time in years and years and years, but you talk to him and Buffalo is the greatest city in the world, according to him. Mm -hmm. right. And it's not just this blind, you know, like patriotism for his city. He literally would be like, oh, like, well, you have this bar, this bar, this bar. You have this thing to do, this thing to do. Like, oh, you want pierogies? I got pierogies. Niagara Falls. You got this. Like, there's just all this stuff in the surrounding, in Buffalo itself and in the surrounding area that it, that it creates this pride that like, I, and I don't know why it is, but I started to even feel that magic the I, th I think I've only been there twice. I think well, I've only been there Badlands, for the two times. Yeah. yeah, and when you've been there, the mayor of Buffalo for Labor Day weekend, right. Badlands Booker. Oh, he is. He's a oh man. He is so big here. He's it's over crazy. as it gets, man. Like everybody knows who Badlands is. I was talking to like somebody very casual, like oh, like my brother like knows a guy who like ran a booth. I was like, I'm sure we got free wings from him. <laughs> He's like, we no know Badlands 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 Booker. Like, uh, and we so we were walking through downtown Buffalo, which like like most cities, because we are obviously from a very specific type of city, um, mm. we were like, there's nobody here. Like, we were in downtown <laughs> Buffalo, and like, we were walking through cobwebs in downtown Buffalo. Yeah, and we thought like it was insane. Court buildings and whatever. And then we went to the rest of the city and like, met the people. And it's, it, it is something that like, at my job, we call places like sneaky nice, where you walk, you go there and you're like, I'm not gonna, oh, and like, I like that sort of sneaking up on you. Um, and it's, it's been so nice to see learn more about it from people like obviously from Ronnie from uh from Badlands and from Buffalo Gym and then also yeah. to be able to go there it was uh was a lot of fun 
Yeah, I like that term, sneaky nice, because I feel like that's kind of how, like, my first year was here. Like, oh, you want to go to this festival, or, hey, you want to go to this place? It's like, ah, I don't know, man. I'll, I'll go. I'll check it out. And then right. you get there, you're like, ah, oh, okay. And then, like, you know, like, yeah. the next week, you're like, man, I need to go back to that place. You know, like, <laughs> right. it's, and you're right, this is a city that's very proud of their city, and I feel like that's contagious. I've never lived somewhere where the people are so proud of where they live. When I lived in North Carolina, when I lived in Georgia, when I lived in Mississippi, Alabama, all you ever hear from anybody there is this place sucks. This place sucks. I can't right. wait to get out of here. You move to Buffalo and you meet so many people who left Buffalo and they came back because they're like, man, I moved to some place that sucked. And then I'm back <laughs> here in Buffalo. Thank God, you know? Yeah. And we have to ask you just because, you know, if we're talking about being a proud Buffalonian, you know, you have someone like Buffalo Jim Reeves who is built from Boston, New York. That's right. Which mm -hmm. we found out, we looked up beforehand, it's a 30 minute drive from Buffalo. But I feel like in mm -hmm. West New York, like a 30 minute drive is like a hop, skip, and a jump. Yeah. Like it's, it's nothing. Oh, um, yeah. But has there been any, I guess, like interaction, I guess, is the, the, the verb I'll use between you and Buffalo Jim? Because Buffalo Jim obviously billed as this Buffalo eater and being at Wingfest twice. Yeah. He's George, like, big, big ups him as the Buffalo eater. But here you are, Ronnie. You're getting a lot of the local press. You're saying you're from Buffalo. I don't know how George introduced you, but I feel like if I were to introduce you, I would I would introduce you from Buffalo oh, yeah. in a contest. So has there been been any sort of like interaction and maybe some I don't know conflict or maybe <laughs> mentorship, some or... controversy between you and Buffalo Jim? No, uh, me and Buffalo Jim get along just fine, and I feel like he's uh, happy that I'm happy here. So no no conflict here, and, and Buffalo Jim's a great guy. The best um, guy Last year at Wingfest, man, I told George before the contest, you know, I was like, George, you know I'm from here now. And he's like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And we get up on the stage, and he's like, from Greensboro, <laughs> North Carolina. And I'm like, ah, oh, man. I, in my head, I was like, look, they just didn't want to put me over because they want to put over Joey Chestnut, you know. <laughs> God God forbid that somebody cheer for somebody besides Joey. God forbid. So, like, yeah, so, like, this year at the contest, I'm like, George, you know I live here, right? He's like, oh, you do? And I'm like... <laughs> Yes, George. I do. <laughs> like I do. And and at Buffalo Bowl, man, when he was introducing me, I was listening. I was like, for the love of God, please tell them I'm from Buffalo, New York. Because like I have been on the local news so many times yeah. here that I feel like most of the people out there know who the hell I am. And I got up there and he said from Buffalo, New York, and I was just like, yes, <laughs> <laughs> got him. Got yeah. Him. yeah, yeah. It took like like what four years for him to find out that Carmen was born on the Fourth of July. Yeah. So it takes. <laughs> George just has so many things rolling through his head. I, you know, I can tell you. I'll share a little bit of of a tidbit quickly just to kind of defend George a little bit. I just, you know, you get, like, you have all the intros and your, your banter during the contest and the judging and you want to make sure the spot, whatever, you know, patting myself on the back for, for a job, you know, that I do from time to time. But uh, during, I, I, I don't know, I forget if it was Gyoza or Donuts. It was probably Donuts. Derek Hendrickson came up to me and he goes, hey, Mike, during my <laughs> intro, can blah, 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 like, can you do this and I'll do that? And I just looked at him and I was just like, Derek, I'm sorry, I just can't. I can't do that. Right. Like, <laughs> yeah. Because you just get yeah. so, like, you know, ready to go. So, uh, but at, at least this year, George builds you correctly from, from Buffalo, a proud Buffalonian. Is the crowd, did you feel the crowd starting to take to you a little bit more uh, now yeah. that you're built from Buffalo? You know, I feel like they did a little bit, but uh, so I get introduced before Badlands and Joey. So I feel like I come out there. And they're like, oh, yeah, here's this jobber from Buffalo. Now, you know, where's Joey and Badlands? Like, <laughs> like, they love me a little bit, but they're like, all right, where's the real show? You know? <laughs> it's tough. It's tough to open yeah. for those two, especially in that town. Cause if, it's uh, tough town. If, if, if uh, Badlands is the mayor and Ronnie's the hometown kid, Joey's like the emperor. Yeah. Like that. They I love, love, yeah. Yeah, love yeah, Joey. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, that's a good segue. Let's talk about Wingfest, 2019's uh, Wingfest, a – a great weekend in competitive eating, you know, obviously for us very early on, we, we took to the contest because it has a long history in major league eating. Yeah. Um, it is one of the few, um, I can't think of any off the top of my head that are still in existence where you have two contests in one weekend. So it's a, it's a big event for competitive eating. Um, and also controversial sometimes you, you get a lot of different winners. It's not, you know, always the Joey show or, or whatever. So it's always but not a big the event. normal wing controversy. So this is something that Correct. obviously if you've been listening to Fink Beats the Stomach, which I hope you have not, um, <laughs> the, uh, the wing bowl does weight. I mean, doesn't do weight, 
or do, or just they like sort of approximate oh, the number ball, of wings. Yeah. Wing ball. RIP. Wing fest is like no good. Like we're gonna weigh it. We're Correct. gonna figure out. We're gonna give you an approximation that like we've actually put some thought into. Correct. So lots of different winners, but all legitimate. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, and Ronnie, I think you know this year. You know, I, I almost feel like. Wingfest is trying to come up with their shtick every single year, which good on them. You know, they're doing the same event year and year and year, trying to keep it fresh. The big story for 2019's Wingfest seemed to be the invasion of ranch into oh Buffalo. So I can you give us I guess first let's start off with what is Buffalo's problem with <laughs> ranch as a condiment? That's let's start there, just to give people context for those Bad. who don't know. I, I can't tell you, like, uh, man, this I, I can't not stress to you how big a deal this is in Buffalo. Like, <laughs> this was such a big deal for the whole week or two weeks leading up to Wing Fest about the fact that there was going to be ranch uh, at this at this festival. So I'm a I'm a Southern boy, so we put ranch on everything. Like, I'll put ranch on pig feet and eat it. Like, I don't, I don't care. Like, give me some ranch, give me some hot sauce, and I'll eat anything you got. Yeah. So – uh, being up here, I learned very quickly you do not ask for ranch anywhere huh. you go because people will look at you like you just, you know, asked if you could see their mom naked. Like, it is, <laughs> it is like, disrespectful to this town to eat ranch. So and what I is it, blue cheese? Yes. It's got to be. It's blue cheese, dude. This is such a blue cheese town. And I think it's a Buffalonian thing, like a buffalo grit thing. It's like, man, we got this stinky cheese and it tastes <laughs> so awful. And God, we love it because we're from Buffalo and we Oh, blue cheese like it's it's so hard to explain but man you've got to eat blue cheese if you're from buffalo 